welcome back to my channel. My name is Destiny, if you're new. If you are not, welcome back. Today we're gonna be talking about my purse collection. So I actually have a lot of designer bags personally. It's a little bit of a problem, but not only do I have luxury purses, I've also worked in the luxury purse industry, so I do know quite a bit about luxury purses. So I wanted to talk today not only about how to authenticate a bag, but also how to determine whether or not a bag is worth the money that you're being charged for the bag. I see a lot of times people buying very expensive name brand bags with the assumption that they're high quality leather and most of the time the bags that the people are buying with this assumption it's not even leather at all so getting right into it I have this bag right here this is a Calvin Klein bag um, that I actually got for Christmas this year I love it so much I think that the shape is really unique it kind of reminds me of a really small carry-on like for the airport but the reason that I wanted to talk about this bag first was actually not just because I like it I want to specifically talk about it because it has two different types of leather here. So first we obviously have this white and taupe colored leather. This is all going to be, I want to say soft calf leather. I don't know for sure. But the second material that we have is right here. This is what we call signature canvas. So big misconception about leather when you're purchasing a higher end brand. The expectation is that the higher amount of money you are paying for a bag, the higher quality the leather is going to be. And while that can be true, you will absolutely never find any brand that has this sort of signature pattern right here on authentic leather. Whether you're purchasing a signature bag like this, which by the way, a signature bag is any sort of bag that has this sort of pattern, it's going to be called the brand's signature bag because it has its signature pattern. Now you can buy one from Calvin Klein, Coach, Michael Kors, and it's not going to be leather. It's going to be coated canvas. Likewise, you can also purchase purchase Tory Burch, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, and it's still not going to be leather. It is going to be coated canvas. The reason being is that this sort of pattern actually just wouldn't be able to stick long term to a leather. It's going to bleed over time and you're going to get sort of the same effect that a tattoo has. The pattern is going to fade. The design is going to fade and eventually it's going to start blending in with the rest of the color around the design. So if you're looking for a genuine leather, bag, I would absolutely not recommend any sort of bag with a signature on it. Obviously the detailing is going to be real. These are designer bags and they are not lying when they say that they use real leather. It's mainly done so that your bag lasts longer. Any sort of signature bag like this is not the one. You definitely want to go for a designer bag that has maybe just the little metal branding. So if you guys want to know if there is a difference between outlet and retail products, there definitely is. Outlet is not just a place where all of old styles from retail go. It is actually a place that has completely different items. The reason this is done is because typically with a coach product, the longer that it sits, the more value it has. So bringing old products to an outlet store really would be more of a hit on the company because these bags are now worth more money and you're selling them at outlet for less. Instead, they use different types of leather. So this one here has a cross grain leather. This is actually just a lower grade leather that has been coated multiple, multiple, multiple times with paint to give it some more sturdiness. However, it takes away all of the texture from the actual leather, so they have to repress it, which is what creates this sort of shimmery, it looks almost sparkly, glossy sort of look. It's just because it is lower grade leather. So if you really want to go to the outlet and you're not specific on the types of leather, you just want something that's gonna last you a long time, I would just recommend you do your research on exactly what type of leather the product that you want is in and see exactly if that lives up to your standards or if it doesn't. It reminds me of just the most girly, classic Barbie type of purse that you would receive with your doll. It Essentially, you're gonna want a bag something more like this. So this bag right here is actually going to be soft glove tan leather and on the inside, it actually is detailed with suede. So all along the back here is suede and it's all going to be authentic real leather first of all because coach is a leather house and second of all there is no signature
another pattern on this one. I also think that this bag right here is a really good example of how to authenticate a bag. And so I'm going to explain how exactly to do that, but really quick, this is my Coach Soft Tabby. She is literally me as a purse. It is just so beautiful. It has three different straps. It's got this little pink crossbody strap here. And then it also has a leather shoulder strap along with the same exact style, but on a crossbody strap. So you have some options. But now let's get into authenticating your bag. So especially with the trend of, you know, Y2K, everybody wants a vintage bag. One important thing, especially when you're shopping online is to verify the authenticity of the product. Because if you don't have the authentic product, not only would you not be able to resell it at the same value if you ever decided that it's not your style anymore, but it's also probably not gonna last as long because 99% of the time, a fake bag is made with fake leather. So first and foremost thing to keep in mind is that each designer brand has a standard of quality. So essentially each bag has to pass a certain quality check. If there's any sort of imperfections or mistakes in a bag that doesn't live up to the company's standards, they will scrap it. So essentially most designer bags have their branding on their ringlets specifically as a way to show that it is an authentic product. So if you ever see any higher end product that does not have any branding, first of all, look it up, make sure that there is no branding on that specific item. You can look inside of the bag, which we'll talk about soon on how exactly to find the serial number and the name and everything of your bag. Next, we're going to go to the zipper. So most brands all the way up to Prada don't use their own zippers. They outsource this most of the time to companies like YKK. It's very hard to see on a leather bag, but I'm gonna try to show you the main areas that you should be looking for for some of these brand names. The very first place that you want to look is sort of this little hoop that holds the actual zipper, and you're going to look for the branding there. You don't have to worry too much about exactly where the positioning and such is on each zipper. There's a lot of times where it's done on the front, on the side, on the inside of the zipper. Probably the hardest to validate is when it is done on the inside of the zipper. Luckily, this one is done on the front of the hoop that is holding the little handle. So you can see pretty easily that this is a YKK zipper. Now, specifically, one thing that you're also going to want to look for is the letter W on these zippers. Absolutely no high-end brand is going to just use a generic zipper, the same kind that Shein, Forever 21, and H&M use. You will never see an authentic designer bag with a W instead of a different brand name. Now lastly, one of the most important ways to validate a bag is its serial number. So most specific, I know the most about coach serial numbers, so I'm going to talk about these ones specifically. However, it doesn't take much more than a Google search to get more informed on a brand that you might have some more products of that I don't. But on the inside here, you're going to see a little brown patch. This patch on the inside of a coach bag is called the story patch. Not every single coach bag is going to have one of these, but it is very important, especially for one that's been made in the past like 30 years, you're definitely gonna want to look for a story patch first. So I'm gonna put the number up here for the one that's in here because I highly doubt I'll be able to get the camera to show that. So essentially what you can see from this is that A means January because each letter is assigned to a month. Each month is assigned a letter alphabetically. The second two numbers involve the year showing that it was made in 2022 and the last two numbers show the location that it was made. I don't know and really don't care what location is 22. It's really not important. What is more important is the numbers following this. This is just referring to the exact item. So if I wanted to go in and ask if they had this exact bag in say like a purple, I would go to coach and I would say I would like the bag C9804 in purple. And they would tell me whether or not that's available. Options, I will say. But essentially, if you can find all of those things on your bag, typically you're gonna have a authentic bag. 
Usually it's pretty easy to tell when a bag is fake, although I know sometimes it's really hard. One time I got a bag from Mercari that I thought was a real Prada bag. I had purchased it obviously thinking that it was and I received it and I was looking specifically at the ringlets. The branding on the ringlets were imprinted unevenly, so the A at the end was much lighter than the P in the beginning. And so immediately I could just tell there's absolutely no way a Prada bag would be sold ever looking like that, especially with the weight of the metal. You're never going to have a super light metal chain from a designer company that weighs the same as you would find at like Forever 21 because they use different types of metal that have different weights. You're going to want to expect at least a little bit of a weight from your chain. Otherwise there is a chance that it is fake. I want to talk about how to determine whether a bag is or is not going to have a higher return value. So any bag with a signature typically is actually not going to bring you back as high of a yield as something like the previous bag that I showed, which does not have any signature on it. This is mainly just because you can't put signature on leather and because it's not real leather, it's not worth as much money, even if you did pay just as much money as it costs for the one without the signature. Over time, the authentic leather is going Going to appreciate in value, whereas coated canvas is just coated canvas. Something like this as well is not going to be worth as much as something like the previous bag that I showed, simply because most of this is made out of fabric. While it does have some really nice leathers on it, this here is glove tan leather. This right here, oh, I forget the name. I forget the name. But the main killer for the value of this bag is going to be the signature and mainly the fact that it is on fabric instead of leather. That being said, let's take a moment for how cute this bag is. I love her. She was made in 07 um, and this is the Coach Hampton bag. It's last time I checked, it was about like $60 on Etsy, I believe. So if you want one like this, they definitely should be still around and they should be pretty affordable. Okay, I'm sorry ahead of time. It is getting pretty dark right now. Now that we're done with the more informational side of the video, I want to talk about the rest of my bags and just mainly about how much I like them, what I like about them. So going with this one, this is my Coach Tate, one of my favorite bags. I will say <laughs> there was an instance at which Coach did try to take it back from me. I had sent it in for a repair because there's a very small thread loose and they were actually gonna give me a credit and then this bag is made with 100% glove tan leather and then this right here for the faux snakeskin I'm not sure what material exactly is used but the rest of it is all glove tan leather um, it does come with a crossbody strap that is the exact same as this faux snake skin little top handle strap. I would say I like to wear it with the top handle the most, but the crossbody is always there when you need it. So I love this one. Definitely to this day, still one of my absolute favorite bags. My Cherish. This is truly one of the most important bags that I have in my collection, just because it was the first bag that I had got that I was really just like, this, this is the type of purse that the woman who I want to be wears. So I don't know if I mentioned this, but the previous bag that I showed was a Christmas present and this was a Christmas present the following year. I don't know if I mentioned that pretty much all of my bags are coach, but this is another coach. This is the Coach Nolita, and she has soft calf leather with this like quilting detail. I wanna say it's cotton on the inside, but I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on that. But she is just such a cute bag. It's actually technically a wristlet, but this is one of only two black bags that I have. I know most people have mostly black bags, but I really like a colorful bag. So this is more so just for when I wanna match with some like black shoes or my leather jacket. But overall, I love this bag so, so much. This is another example of a bag that's definitely a better quality. So this one right here is another coach bag and it's one of a few crossbodies that I have, but this one essentially is 
probably the oldest bag that I have. It's so old that it does not have a style number on the story patch. So that leads me to believe that it's probably about 30 to 40 years old. Although don't quote me on that. If somebody knows exactly what this bag is and the time frame that it came out, let me know. I would say that I mostly use this bag for like the zoo, the ballpark, places that they're not gonna let you in with a really huge bag. Also places that I don't wanna be carrying around a bag on like my shoulder or in my hands. I also most of the time don't wear any silver. It's definitely not one of my most used bags, but my grandma did give this to me. So it has a lot of sentimental value. So this bag right here is not one of the oldest in age, but it's one of the oldest in terms of I've had it the longest. I don't know where the strap is. I have it somewhere, but I usually use a strap from a different bag. So I didn't even have it on here. This is a Rebecca Minkoff. Um, it's pebble leather and it's got this little tassel here. I think it's really cute. I mostly use it in the winter time, not really in the summer. I don't know why. It just looks a little weird to me in the summer. I do like this bag. I've had it since I was maybe like 16. So she was one of the first leather bags that I had. So this here is actually the bag that I stole the chain from to put onto that bag. And it's also not with this bag. So I don't know, but this is another coach. I forget the name of it actually, but I think it's just called the belt bag um, because it actually, it comes with a belt that you can either hook through here or you could just wear it on its own. And it also comes with a crossbody strap that you can hook up here so that it can be either a fanny pack or a crossbody. I really like to take this one to Petco Park because they are so strict on what they allow in and what they don't. So I know at the very least, if it literally can't even fit my phone, it's gotta work. I, it can't get any smaller than this. So one day when I'm in New York City, I'm gonna be wearing this everywhere. I just feel like it's so New York. It's all glove tan leather with the gunmetal, which I really love gunmetal. And it has like a orange detailing on the side, which I actually have never really been into orange, but I have this and I actually really love this bag, even though I don't use it too often just because it's so small. So this here is my only other Calvin Klein bag. It's a pretty casual bag, very simple. It's just nylon with some patent leather down at the bottom. Is it patent leather? Some sort of leather. It's just a very casual bag that I use when I don't want to take my very nice bags out. So this here is the Prada bag that I thought was real when I bought it off of Mercari. I went to Prada stores, I looked at them. Absolutely no bag ever has uneven ringlets on the branding, ever. You will never see anything that looks like this. So I pretty much only wear this to places where I wanna look nice, but I also would not be surprised if my purse got stolen. So I would rather a fake Prada purse go than a real coach purse. So we're getting on to the end here. I have two more bags and this one here was actually my very first coach purse ever. And I think it was my very first purse. I got this when I was about nine years old from my Nana. This was her purse before me and it is just a really cute little black coach crossbody. I very, very rarely use this, but for collector's sake, I just have to keep it. So this is the last bag that I have and it's another one that I don't wear too often, but that's mainly just because I don't wear crossbodies too often. I really love this bag though. It is specifically the Coach North South file bag. I think they still sell this silhouette. So if you like this, definitely go get one. I love this bag so much. It passes into most theme parks, concerts and such, unless it's one that has like very, very strict ones. But this is another one that is actually signature coated canvas. That is again, because small patterns like this do not live long on leather like this. Eventually these little flowers would turn into little circles. Alrighty guys, that concludes my purse collection. I think, let me know which ones are your favorites. Let me know if there's any of my bags that you actually don't like. Although I probably won't really like take it very much so to heart because I love all of these bags and nobody's opinion is gonna change mine. Again, like I said, I do know quite a bit about leather um, and about purses. So if you guys do ever have any questions about those, you can leave them in the comments as well and I'll do my best to answer those. But that is all from me. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.